Gaurav Magus, um, The Green Party agrees with the principle of active land management and of utilising underused sites and identifying private lands that could be of benefit to projects for renewable of particular areas or the consolidation um, of public lands with off-cut lands or, or lands of that type. The core principle of the Land Development Agency should be to operate to support local authorities in providing housing and managing land. It should be based on the following principles. That public and affordable construction of public homes on state land is the norm, so that all procurement is on for an affordable basement ba basis and is done directly by the public body, either the AHB or the local authority, without outsourcing to private developers. All housing constructed on state land should be sustainable, it should be climate resilient, and it should be based on the principles of community wealth building, with social clauses included. We should use the establishment of the LDA to reverse the bonfire of building regulations and design standards that we have witnessed since 2015, including the failed build to rent typology that has trapped so many HAP tenants in substandard living. We should see this as an opportunity to require the implementation of relevant parts of the Safest Houses report, including building control reform and the third um, party certification of building standards. We should include in the legislation a provision that the state retains control in the long term um, of any and all lands procured with state funding. The Land Development Agency must never find themselves in a position as a permanent or temporary landlord to any tenant. The LDA should never be in the business of facilitating projects and removing the risk, very importantly, removing the risk in projects for private developers and private equity investors. That's not how public money or public effort should be employed. The LDA should not be entitled to sublease or transfer public lands other than in accordance with social housing, affordable purchase and cost rental models that are mutually agreed. This bill should provide for leasing from public bodies rather than land transfers, with a power to enter into development agreements with local authorities and state bodies that would be subject to minimum terms and that would be scheduled into the bill. For this purpose, the primary housing models should be social housing, as in housing owned and provided for by local authorities or AHBs, for which the tenant will pay a differential rate in accordance with the Housing Acts on state lands. And this housing should be provided on the basis of cost plus a maximum of 5% developer profit. And affordable housing, defined as uh, provided on public lands with the benefit of a waiver of development levies and service site funding, acquired by the buyer on a long-term lease with controls included for the community trust or the AHB that retains ownership of that land, financed and built on the basis of costs plus a maximum of 5% developer profits and subject to a right of first refusal to the local authority or AHB landlord of the home with a clawback to repay the land value and the state subsidy. What I'm outlining is a very basic principle here and that is absolutely vital to the operation of any body that would seek to undertake the work that is outlined in the LDA bill and it's this. There is no such thing as affordable housing and community affordable housing without first setting out a model for affordable construction. Without agreeing or setting out some kind of a ceiling on developer profits, uh, as instigated in other European countries, this bill will become a gift to the profit margins of private landowners. I would like to echo Deputy McAuliffe's pre previous sentiment. There's a lot to like in this bill, and I would hope that some of these issues can be addressed at committee stage. Okay, here, look, as a member of the Public Accounts Committee, I spend a good portion of my week uh, reviewing the audited accounts of taxpayer funded entities that have fallen short of standards of fiscal per performance and or governance. It is in that context I would like to say a, a brief word about the fact that the LDA is already operational. Um, it's already established, or it's already working under an establishment order but with not a huge amount of oversight into its proceedings, its hiring policies, um, how it's operating right now. Um, even before this bill proceeds through the doll, it can enter into contracts, it can acquire lands, it can negotiate land transfers with government departments, with agencies, with local authorities. The legislation we are now considering seems to allow the agency to form subsidiaries and acquire public land on the basis of first refusal and enable it to implement compulsory purchase orders. 
At the moment, the LDA has an interim board. Now, I accept that this board will be reformed, possibly, on, on the completion of this bill. But currently, the board consists of 12 members, five of whom are from the banking sector, four more are from government or, lo or local authorities. Um, there is one academic in social policy. There is, there is no specialist in community design. There are no specialists in, in uh, environmental design. There is no specialist on sustainable development of housing, and there is no specialist in the sustainable development of communities. In fact, considering it is in International Women's Day on Monday, I think it's fair to point out that there are more bankers on the board of the LDA than there are women. The LDA will have far-reaching and considerable powers. They already do, and that activity concerns me. I do not look forward to what I think is the inevitable appearance of the LDA in front of the Public Accounts Committee. Carlock, Sean Lamass, a Fianna Fáil Taoiseach, presided in 1963 over the development of the Local Government Act, which enshrined many of the housing and planning frameworks that we still work with today, and it's been a powerful act in, in the development of housing in this country. It established our local authorities as the core body responsible for the provision of social and public housing. So it's your local authority, it's your local government, it's your local democracy that should be providing housing for you. Under this legislation, the legacy of this government will be the dismantling, in a very real way, of that 1963 legislation. Local authorities will no longer be the foundational providers of public housing in the state. This legislation effectively locks in the failed and hugely discredited strategic housing development framework, bypassing democratic oversight and erasing local voices from planning decisions. And I would urge the committee at committee stage to consider some of those points.